Welcome to the state of the game. It is Tuesday, um, March 9th. God, it's March 9th already, 2021. Uh, welcome to the Dark Age of Camelot State of the Game. I'm Ramek, and tonight I'm joined by two very special guests. Uh, very excited to have, uh, first we'll go to uh, Bumbles. Uh, Bumbles is joining us live. Uh, but there, uh, there is no fern. I suppose the fern is, uh, is getting some sun, yeah? Yes, the fern The fern needs sun every once in a while. It can't, uh, it can't sit in my uh, studio. That's a fair point. And uh, so we'll, we won't talk about the fern all night, but the fern is, is a, it's a nice plant. Um, and uh, <laughs> over to Zizix. Uh, Zizix has joined us before on the podcast. Hello, Zizix. Hello, hello. How's it going, everybody? I've chosen to uh, play the game of hands and partial character screen. So that's what you get from me tonight. I love it. It's 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 very competitive of you, um, getting the, getting the getting the keyboard view. Uh, I'm a fan. So anyway, um, we've got a, a bunch of stuff to cover tonight, um, but let's go straight into Caldonia, which is what we've been talking about now uh, on the stream and in Discord for quite some time. Uh, the catch up in Caldonia event uh, started last week, has been an enormous success for the game and for Broadsword. Uh, it is an event that uh, is a, it's a ten day event. It's it's essentially all Caledonia, and the tunes uh, new tunes started off at level one, and uh, it's a I, I don't know how else to describe it other than this amazing like arena style event um, with the broadsword twist of the player population policing themselves. So there's no auto grouping. Uh, there's no mandatory eight v eight or five v five. Uh, it's very much a you go in, uh, you form up, and you roll out. And there's been some really, really, really cool twists to this. Um, so it's no longer, you can't go in anymore and create a tune. It was for the first three days you could create tunes for this event. Um, now uh, the people who created event, uh, created tunes can go ahead and ride them out all the way through 50. Uh, and it goes through um, the uh, next Monday, which is the 15th of March. So first, I want to go to Bumbles, who's been playing the event a lot lately, um, and I just I'm curious to know what you think of the Catch Up and Caledonia event and your experience with it so far. I think it's awesome. Um, I actually took a little bit of a break from the game because kind of got uh, burned out with the same thing over and over. And uh, this event has been great. It's been the first time since Galahad that I actually grouped and played in like an eight-man style uh so it's a completely different experience for me i'm playing healers which is bananas um but yeah it's been a lot of fun it's uh it, the, the change of pace has been fantastic it's been nice to not have speed warps that's been great so uh i'm a big fan yeah it's uh it is a, it's a huge change of pace isn't it it's uh yeah. it's, it's been it's been awesome uh yep th it is well, so let me let me go to Zizix real quick. Zizix, let me get your because you we caught you solo the other day. I think you've been running in eights too. Tell me a little bit yeah. about your experience. Yeah, so uh, a bunch of people that I play with, we uh, are not experienced in Hib, so we all chose to run Hib. Uh, we have you know a variety of different classes and such. So uh, it's definitely been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot for sure because I'm very experienced in mid and alb and not so much in hip. So I'm I'm glad to try out a druid and a hero, which is you know out of my element. So it's been a lot of fun. I feel like everybody got a taste of something new. Um, even the folks that traditionally zerg quite a bit. Now there are exceptions to this. There are some of the BGers that. Um, just stuck to sort of the traditional uh, zerging on their own home realms. But there were quite a few people that switched. Uh, Legan, I know, created tunes on Alb and has been running eights on Alb, which is um, a departure. Apparently, he's liking it a little too much for his guildmates, uh, from what I heard. He's like, <laughs> he's really enjoying it. Um, but let's just go really quickly and talk about the basics of the event. So uh, there are level caps for each day. Uh, it started off as uh, 15, a uh, level cap of 15. And there were uh, there's three instances for the event. At least there were in the beginning. So there's a a, a one through four, a five through nine, and a ten plus instance. And the ten plus is like the real deal, Caldonia. Uh, after day, I think it was what it was after day three, they institute um, they put in a a automatic level to ten, which is 
amazing because it means you don't need to find the fights in the first two instances in order to get to the, the, the last instance. The other huge change that they made, and this is really like the, I think the exciting part, maybe not this specific change, but just the idea of broadsword, uh, you, you know, on the fly, seeing what works and what doesn't with the player population and making these changes. But they they granted groups that like that that included these lower level tunes a 400% RP, BP, and XP bonus for grabbing these lower level folks. So right now the level cap is, it's 35, right, today, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. And uh, I, I came in on a level 10 tick and I was level 22 within an hour and everybody in the group benefited from it too because they all got a 400% bonus. So Broadsword has changed this this thing has progressed over the course of time. They've changed the event. It's uh it's great. So uh Bumbles, did you have some like I don't know, did you have uh some what's the word I'm looking for? Were you concerned that <laughs> may maybe this event wouldn't turn out to be as successful as it was? Like did you have some hesitation? I can't come up with the word, but what oh, was your initial what was your impression of it? Uh but, but even before it went live. Um I think with anything, as Dark Age of Camelot players, we're all a little skeptical about anything that happens. We hope for the best, we expect the worst, um, and this just surprised a lot of people, I think. I, I know, like, the people that I've been playing with, you know, you and, and uh, Borgio and Bama, and, like, you know, like, it's been a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and Ollie has been, it's been awesome grouping with you guys. Um, so, yeah, very, very surprised. Um, I think they're doing a great job like listening and I think a lot of people have actually said that the small changes that they're doing makes us as the community feel like all right they're listening to what we're saying and uh, I think that's what we've wanted kind of all along um, with the main game but uh, you know maybe this is a test for them to see if they can do it on the fly as well so um, fingers crossed that uh, that sticks yeah the promise of these kinds of changes sort of finding their way into normal uh, NF RVR uh, into potentially what the classic server will end up being, right? Uh, it was uh, kind of a... Uh, I'm having a very difficult time with uh, the English language tonight, so I apologize. But it's kind of a proving <laughs> ground for their changes to see what works yeah. and what doesn't. And uh, I was saying on the stream earlier that it, it appears that the devs have been up super late at night because there have been changes and fixes happening at like 11 p.m., so they've been hyper focused. Uh, to use Zizix, first impressions. What did you think when it was announced versus what it's actually become so far? Um, I was honestly a little scared that I was going to get like two level twos, and everybody was just going to outrace me, and I was just going to get left in the dust because you know I don't play quite as much during U.S. prime time anymore. You know, I'm definitely after 10 o'clock EST most of the time. So I was very happy to see that I could just instantly make one of my alts to 10. You know, that was definitely a big, a big, uh, you know, helping hand there as well as, you know, the 400 XP, you know, that was, that was a significant, you know, uh, mental boost, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, the first, go, go first ahead. couple of days it came out, uh, you know, I think all of us, you know, I was I was away working on Friday when it uh, was first released. So in my head, I'm like, all right, I got to do some catch up and um, them implementing the adding a lower player to get the 400 percent XP, 400 percent BPs uh, was huge because and also the automatic level 10, as long as you made a character who was in one of the previous instances, uh, it's huge because at the point where. You know, I was just making alts to be like, all right, I'm going to try this out, see if I can catch it up. Um, it was difficult at first to get through those, uh, you know, one through four, five through nine. It was tough because there just weren't the people in there because everybody had already progressed. So uh, I'm glad that they, you know, kind of retroactively worked it out to allow people to catch up and uh, to play along. Um, and, you know, I had the opportunity today to group with the best druid on the entire server. Um, I don't know if you know her. Her name is Toonses. Uh, you know, so it was fantastic. We got her f from like a level 11 to, I think she, we logged off at level 30. So, you know, that's it. It was awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, what about you, Zizix? What was your, um, 
what was your take on I mean that the changes have been great right but is there anything maybe uh -huh. that you could see uh, that Broadsword could do? Because this is kind of, this folds into my next question. Is there anything that Broadsword could do currently in the event to make it different or better? Any pain points for you? Um, I'm afraid of speed warps, honestly. I mean, I play a caster. I've played a caster most of my life of Dark Age, and I'm afraid that speed warps are going to make the, the event go from very enjoyable to very much not enjoyable very quickly. Um, I honestly think that they should just not allow ML. So they should remove the ML trainer from the uh, the zone there and just basically say, keep leveling, keep getting RPs, keep getting everything else, but but no MLs. I think MLs are going to break what this game currently is. Uh, and, and I know it's only 10 days and it's not going to be this huge thing. It's, it's, you know, it's only a short term event, but I think people will get more enjoyment out of the last three days if there are no MLs versus if, you know, they, they add all these things in. I know people are already talking about templating and making BP gear and doing all this other stuff because you can buy Stardust to then make some of the BP gear. So people are going to be able to have the full 127 templates plus MLs plus CLs. Like, it's going to be fighting in big boy RBR, which I almost don't want, you know? I'm kind of enjoying the, the slowness factor to the game a little bit. Yeah, I, I can actually agree with that. I, and I'm, I'm with both of you. I think that the introduction of MLs is a little bit difficult for me to stomach Can, just with the amount of enjoyment I've had out of like what the, the, the current pace of the game. Yeah. Uh, but that folds... But just how small the map is. Right. Just imagine, you know, 50 people placing speed warps on that small map. It's just, it's going to be rough. I think I've mentioned it yesterday or today about, you know, not being Zephyr or not attacking somebody that goes uh, straight into uh, phase shift <laughs> has been awesome. It's just been fun. So, uh, you know, it, it, it takes, it, I don't know, I think the game's more competitive without those things in, but that's just me. Uh, I agree. Um, the other thing that I don't think we mentioned, or I didn't mention off the top, was how people are transported into the event. So they they have created these, uh, like, sort of walled off areas that are not PKs, but they are sort of little towns that they've created outside of the normal map of Caldonia for each realm. And they've removed all the guards and all the mobs from Caldonia itself and have just created this big arena. And in order to break up the, the porting locations and the... I don't know if Broadsword intended to, like, stop Zergs from forming. I don't think that's possible, and I think they realize that. But uh, they you you port as a group. So you go to this, this, this obelisk, and you port, and it drops you into a random spot on the map, all eight of you. And you can also, if one of you or seven of you are out, uh, you know, got stuck somewhere, uh, as soon as the group ports, you all get brought back to the same starting location. So they've tweaked that too, which is awesome, right? The, initially, they had used PKs as porting locations, and those were getting camped. And so they said, they listened to the community that said, like, just kill the PK porting locations, and now just drop people into open field. Uh, it, it is... It's awesome. It is so good. But I'm with you about the MLs. Like, I don't... I am worried, too, about... And chat is talking about the map size. I'm worried about what's going to happen with a bunch of speed warps all over this very tiny map where there's already now Zergs forming, right? During, uh, you know, the, the tail end of the evening. At least mm -hmm. for U.S. primetime. I'm a little worried about that. Yeah. Yeah, that porting, uh, the group porting setup that they have right now is pretty awesome. Um, you know, because you have to be aware if you're, you know, I, I think there's general areas where people know that you could be ported. Um, so if you're fighting in that area, there's a chance that an entire eight man is just going to get dropped on top of you while you're in a fight. And that just makes it more exciting. I just think it's fun. Yeah, I think uh, one downside to it is, is that people have kind of picked up on where those locations are and i had a 16 man literally camping us as we zone in you know just sitting waiting for you which you know it's an element to the game i understand that but it was kind of a little lame when it happened three times in a row i was like okay guys come on move on like you don't need to sit here and wait for people to spawn in all day right at least there so. is some immunity which is nice yes but it yes, doesn't it doesn't mean you're always going to get away but there is at least some immunity which is helpful um so let's just very quickly sort of talk a little bit about the topic suggestions that were sent in um and uh, i appreciate everybody that that dropped these in there there were quite a few 
the first one is, do you think broad short, broad, broad short, <laughs> broad English language again, it's Get tough. Me. I'm telling it's been a long day. <laughs> it was on the top of a, a very tall hill and blowing. Anyway, it was a, it was a very cold day. Uh, do you think Broadsword should run this event again? Uh, let's go to Zizix first. What do you think? Should they run it again? Yes. I think, uh, you know, so far it's been a pretty good success. I think too often, though, is bad. Um, I already have all my guildmates memeing me so hard because uh, I'm pushing Rumrick 12 on my Spirit Master, and, and I just see the memes rolling through of, Broadsword makes another event. Zizix never makes her own rank 12. And it's, just, you know, <laughs> it's to the point that they're like poking fun at me. I'm like, you know, just just let me reach 12 before you make another event. Come on, guys. <laughs> but yes, I, I think it's so far it's been a success. They've definitely listened to the community. And, and should we do it again? Of course. Maybe not too, too often, but but definitely. Uh, how soon? After you hit rank 12? Is that the, the yes, point? Yes. Okay. Yeah, after I hit rank 12. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure they wait. Yeah. Maybe realistically, like uh, maybe once a quarter, you know, you do it in the spring, in the fall, in the summer, in the in the winter, kind of like a, an event kind of thing. That, that could be a, a reasonable time schedule. Yeah. What about you, Bumbles? Do you think they should uh, they should run it again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also think they should run it. And uh, instead of doing it in Caledonia, they should use the TOA maps. Oh, um, yes. Just because I'm obsessed with the TOA maps. I think they're all fantastic. There's so many cool places that nobody new players don't get to see anymore. Um, you know, you had the whole exodus from the game uh, solely blamed on TOA, but uh, I personally really enjoyed TOA and just the artwork in it for a game of this age was just pretty rad. Yeah, there is some really beautiful stuff in there. And um, although yeah. I'm learning over the course of time that more and more people actually join it or they, they go explore TOA, they do a lot of the, the bounty point quests, uh, but yeah. they but they don't they don't they don't do it in mass. And it would be nice to have uh, an event based on that. I, I completely agree with you. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see how the current features, right, the, the quality of life stuff that they've put into Caldonia makes its way, into this Caldonia event, rather, makes its way into New Frontiers. I am super curious about the group porting. Uh, I'm curious about, you know, just the idea of getting people back into the fight quickly. Uh, I don't I don't know what else can be gleaned from this other than just like movement stuff but uh Zizix, do you do you think that there are features from this particular event that would be awesome in new frontiers as this thing wraps up uh you mentioned the porting thing I I, I don't really see that happening to be honest like we can already port to keeps we can uh, port to the km towers and or uh, EV towers and whatnot um but I don't know that I see them adding the porting effect to the game as in the regular Realm War map. You know, I, I don't really see that part of it being added. Um, maybe having this this type of obelisk sojo effect where the whole entire group gets ported together instead of everyone having to port to a keep one at a time. Maybe you could port to keeps, you know, you, uh, what's the right word there? Uh, you know, all, all is one basically. Instead of having everyone has to go and click the, the thing every single time to port into a keep. But I, I don't know if they would ever add like location porting into the game. I don't know. What are you guys' opinion on that? Yeah, um, and I I don't think uh, I don't I don't think the idea of dropping people in like I'm just curious if there's things about getting people back into the fight and group porting a, a, a keeps might be one. Um, um, certainly I think the questing, right, was another, this idea, these, the, these shorter duration quests that reward maybe less in New Frontiers. I don't know. What about you, Bumbles? What do you think? Are there lessons to be learned here? Features? I hope, uh, and this is something I've been thinking about. I hope this isn't a precursor to the possibility of, um, RVR instances being brought to, um, everyday life. Like I would really the idea of having something like this where eight mans can go in and just you know go at each other uh small man solo etc um I, I know that has nothing to do with what the question you asked but that was just a thought process i had when you brought it up uh, i just hope it's not a precursor of them saying is this something that we can implement and can we implement it well um but no i mean the, the porting stuff, and I mean, I just don't know what they could bring from this event to live other than um, 
say, add uh, a bonus to EC accounts. If you're an EC account and, you know, an eight man picks you up, the entire eight man gets a 25% RP bonus or something like that. Um, that would allow new or returning players to try out the game, come in, play the basic classes, and still be kind of like welcome to the community. Um, I just find too often, you know, it, it, the EC position itself is just really difficult. So uh, that's something that, you know, could help, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I could see how that would be very, very helpful. I worry also on the flip side about certain groups um, just just getting EC accounts, you know, just creating EC accounts and joining them up. But but yeah, I mean, any way to get EC players in, or, you know, people that are just trying the game out or whatever into the same, into the same groups that, that veteran accounts are that are running. Yeah. You remove the stigma, but I, I'm with you. Uh, anything, get, this has been great. And one of the things also that wasn't mentioned is that EC accounts were treated, I think, just about the same, right? As, yep. um as veteran accounts in this event. So it meant that people could come over uh, from, or, you know, returning players, people from shards, whatever could come over and actually partake. Um, yeah. I do want to point something out though. There's been in chat now and all across this thing, people are talking about how this was a copy, right? Of, of another event on another server. Here's my take on this. Um, Broadsword has a very particular way of running the game. They always have mythic, right? Mythic turned into broadsword, but they—it's always been this um, police. You know, the the player community polices itself. Um, what happens in RVR happens in RVR. Um, they, you know, that where there's been—I'm not going to say quality of life things, but there's been like uh, rules that have been imposed in other in other servers, right? In other in other shards or in shards that hasn't happened here, and I think it. Um, I think up until this event, I was under the impression that it was actually better to police or or at least box people in, uh, you know, like, like the event, uh, like a 5v5 auto group event, right? I was, I went into this thinking that's right. That's the way to go. After seeing what Broadsword did with this, this, this Caldonia event, I'm, it's convinced me that Broadsword has, and I've, I've, I'm a fan of Broadsword and the things that they've done for the most part, but it's convinced me that they absolutely have a grasp on what the current population of Uane, uh needs and also uh, what it might look like to, you know, either recruit players from other servers or gather uh, returning players that maybe quit the game or, or even new folks. It's convinced, it's convinced me that they understand, um, which is awesome. Because I think there was a question about that with what Classic would look like, right? Um, I'm going to skip the next topic, which is what is your favorite part of the Caldonia event? I think we already covered that. But um, next question is, uh, why can EA pull in 2,000 people for an event but cannot keep them interested? Also free Mordred. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, EA, there there have been, th I think Beep said the other day, there have been thousands of tunes created for this event. Uh, there are definitely people that have not played uh, that are coming back. And so I don't know if either one of you have uh, ideas about keeping the momentum going, but it seems to me that, you know, they've, if anything, they've proven that they're listening to the community. What do you guys think? I'll go to uh, Bumbles first. Um, I think it's, you know, it's kind of like what I started out by saying. It's just, it's a breakup of the monotony, you know. Uh, I, like many of you, have played this game since 2002 uh, when it came out in beta uh, or 2003, whatever it was. So a long time now. And uh, I mean, after a while, it's every night is a very, very similar thing, especially within the past couple of years. Um, you know, the BGs in the U.S. primetime, we all know about the EU BGs. Um so this is just a, it's a way to get people playing different styles like myself. I mean, I solo with Zerg Surf. Um, this has allowed me to eight man as much as eight man as possible within these confines, but you can still find eight man fights, you know, at certain times. Um, so I think it's fantastic in that aspect, but uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a tough situation. 
Uh, Zizix, what about you? Do you have thoughts on that? Um, I think one of the things is that in regards to players coming back to the game, I guess I could make the comparison of a first-person shooter and an uh, old-school MMORPG, right? So in a first-person shooter, let's just say Battlefield or Call of Duty, one of those style games, um, you and your friend say, I'm going to buy this game and we're going to play. And on day one, you're dropped into the battle. You can fight. You're on even playing fields. There's no grinding. Everyone's having a lot of fun. You're shooting people and killing people in whatever first-person shooter is that you're playing. Versus an MMO, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort to build up your character. And the bonuses of playing an MMO, we all know. I don't need to sit here and explain that to people. Um, but the other hand is that there are a lot of people out there that don't like to spend the time and put in the effort to build your character in an MMO game. And they just want the instant action and the fun right away, right? And so what this event has kind of done is kind of given Dark Age that little bit of first person shooter type of event where, or type, type of uh, combat or type of uh, interaction. Basically, you know, you have people that are coming in, playing, you're grouping up right away, you're instantly fighting. And, you know, it's it's something that's enjoyable and, and somewhat, you know, instant gratification, which obviously most humans enjoy. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the things that has kind of really drawn people in is is kind of that instant gratification. And, you know, it's 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 different than what an MMO normally is. So some people kind of get drawn more to that first person shooter style action. So. Yeah, it's it's getting getting back into it, right? I, I agree with you there. I think the that I, maybe for me has been the most interesting part of and what like what Bumble said about breaking things up and the monotony of the game, getting back into the fight so quickly, um, has been more fun for me. I think and I think this event has been more fun than gameplay that I've I can remember in years. It's it just the idea of just getting back into it is is awesome. So yeah, instant gratification yeah. super important. Totally with you. Um, the yeah. question the question one is, thing how I was, I was thinking about when 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 Zizek was uh, talking is I I think for a lot of people and I know for me personally when these other servers came out the draw to them is that everybody starts out on an even playing field. You know, everybody starts out at level one and it's just like that that push to get to a certain point where you can start to become competitive. This has kind of taken that out of it in a sense, the the push to become competitive with the daily caps, because without the daily caps, you know, you'd have people who aren't the casuals who can't level more than, you know, five levels a day who would have been 50 by now. And then they're just completely annihilating this, the lower levels. So it's kind of checking the playing field for a lot of people, which I think is fantastic. Um, but you know, I, I just enjoy the idea of having a level playing field. I've never been one of those people. I've played every character in the game. Most of them are at least above, you know, realm rank five, but I play them so often that my highest is my necro and he's not even realm rank 12. I just don't have the patience to do that. Um, so I, I just like the idea of a, a level playing field because that's probably one of the biggest things you hear from people who, when trying to return to the game, they're like, yeah, it's not fun going out there and just getting rolled by realm rank 12s and 13s uh, all the time. And, uh, you know, you, you have to feel for him in a way, but, uh, that's just the nature of what the game is. It's been out so long. So, you know, 50% of the population is uh, well over around rank 10. So I, th I like this for that aspect where it kind of just lay uh, levels the playing field. Yeah, yeah it, I agree. It doesn't take super long to get to that point either. Um, yeah, uh, Zizix, what about you on this? Yeah, no, no, I was just uh, agreeing with what he was saying that, you know, it definitely levels the playing field. I've had people that, you know, I, I know in real life that have, you know, come to me and said, oh, I've enjoyed this so much, you know, we're all level one again. You know, it's it's not like I'm fighting these realm rank twelves out there, and you know, it's just easy to to jump right back into it and not feel kind of inferior in a sense, you know. So yeah. similar to what Bumbles was saying. It's it's answered for me too a lot of these questions about uh, group skill, right? And the group skill versus all of the abilities and and the high end templates, and it's been really interesting. Not suggesting at all for a second that the group that I'm I've been in, including with with Bumbles and and with Borgio and Ollie and um, Baba Lama and Ch I'm an, I'm an ET. I, I go down the list. Not suggesting that those folks aren't experienced players. They are very experienced players. 
but it has removed the question for me that I had about the comparison of really uber competitive eight mans being able to, when everybody's on a level playing field, when everybody started fresh, how much of it is about skill and how much of it is also the ability to stack items, right? The ability to do things that, uh, or the ability to, to, to use things, use combinations of items, RAs, um, to be able to kite indefinitely or not take damage. It, for me, it's become pretty clear that when you level the playing field and you start clean, that it's a lot more fun and a lot easier to be able to have fair fights with those groups. Um, and so the it's been a, uh, a calling for the new classic server to have seasons in this idea of changing over, right? Every few months, resetting the server. Bumbles, what's your take on that? Do you think seasons uh, would be a good call? Uh, or do you think that's the wrong approach? Maybe there's another way. For me personally, because like I said, I don't care. Rumrick, it's like whatever. I don't. I don't really care. Sure, you get helpful abilities, but I'm not. You know, I just get bored playing one thing. Um, but the idea of seasons for me personally would be fine because I'd be happy to start over fresh. You know, every couple of months or whatever it is. You know, um, I know that there are a lot of people who would not want to do that. You know, they play one tune and they play it for pretty much ever. Um, and the idea of, uh, you know, not retaining all that work that they're putting into it uh, is just, you know, very off-putting for them. But for me personally, I I could care less. I'd enjoy it. Yeah. Um, what about you, Zizix? Do you have thoughts on the idea of starting fresh every so often? Yeah, so I I can uh, kind of, you know, I guess be the, the counter to what he's saying over here, where I'm definitely one of those players that likes to uh, kind of build my character but i would very much be interested in the uh the seasons knowing beforehand that hey that's that's what's going to happen you know i play dark age of camelot because i know that in three years from now my character will still be here and i can come back and log in and goof around on him and he still has all of his gear and whatnot and and, and that's the reason why i play mmos right is because it's this long uh kind of drawn out quest slash um you know character development. That's what, that's why I play MMOs. You know, I, I play something like a, a first person shooter or, or something along those lines, because I'm with the understanding of, okay, we're basically starting at ground zero every single time the, you know, the game resets or every single time the season resets or whatever. I haven't played Fortnite, so I'm not sure how their seasons work, but um, you know what I'm saying there. As long as the notion that it is a season server is well-defined beforehand, I would definitely be very much interested in that. Um, and that's just kind of how I fall into it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if all says in chat, restart every fourth decade. There you go. That's, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that kind of hits the mark between, uh, between all of these opinions. Um, so I think we've kind of talked about the momentum, how to keep the momentum going. RP bonuses, I think are a definite, like, I feel like that would keep the momentum going a little bit. Um, but maybe it's just as simple as people recognizing the broadsword has been listening. Is that like is that super silly of me to suggest? Like I, it ju it's just like a matter of, you know, these a lot of people left because of some of the you know they were they were irked by a change that was made in the game at one point at one patch, and all of this rapid development that's been happening in this event, maybe it's going to change hearts and minds. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think, you know, it, the history of the game, anytime an RP bonus goes in, population goes up. That's just how it goes. You know, I mean, people are more apt to play more often because, you know, there are, they're just, you know, if they have lower level tunes, they can catch them up faster. If they're trying to grind to get realm rank 12, realm rank 13, you know, it's just a, you can knock out a big chunk of that. Um, so I think having an RP bonus it's a tough line to walk for them because they can't just have it in all the time or else, you know, you're not going to get those, the fluctuation of players coming back and forth. Um, but I, I definitely think an RP bonus will help. Um, but you know, I don't know. They, like you said, they, they, they have been listening and I think a lot of us just appreciate that, you know, the little changes that they're making to this event alone, uh, has shown that they're listening to what people are saying, what's working, what's not working. 
Um, and I think that means a lot to a lot of people because, you know, I've seen people rage and just take off because they're like broadsword doesn't care about us, blah, 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 blah. Like there's some petulant childs, but that's just the nature of being a, you know, the customer is always right mentality. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, there's if, and if you get sucked into that, it, it can be, um, well, I think if, if people have watched last week's state of the game, uh, or uh, any of the streams over the last week, they could tell you that I get I get I get can get sucked into that drama a little too often myself. Um, <laughs> uh, Zizix, before I go to the next topic, what about you? What do you? Uh, yeah, what do you I, I mean, ha having training dummies in the uh, in the areas would be nice. Just saying, uh, if you're listening, please put them in. Um, <laughs> but no, realistically, it, it's nice because it was one of those things where people were actively commenting about things that needed to be fixed or things that weren't working and they were actively fixed and they were actively corrected right away very quickly, which is great to see. You know, we, everyone was complaining about porting into keeps, you know, it's becoming too much of a problem for a lot of people. Personally, I didn't mind it, but you know, I know a lot of people had problems with that and they changed it pretty quickly. So that is, uh, it's definitely great to hear Broadsword is, is, you know, listening to the community. Now at the same time, some people do yell and scream too loud and uh, kind of, ruin it for the rest of us but uh overall it seems like the right voices were heard which is good to see so i don't know if i you know the people that normally complain and i'm not going to call people out here but the people that are normally complaining about things have been the ones to praise broadsword for the changes that they've made so when you turn a crowd like that it tells me that they're doing something right um and you know, the, I would like. I would love to see training training dummies there tomorrow. It just, but they are. They've been listening. They've been actively engaged. I don't know if Beeb has slept at all in the last uh, uh, four four days. It seems maybe not. Uh, I don't Beeb, think Beeb sleeps in general. I don't think yeah, so yes. either. I'm 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 not I'm not entirely convinced Beeb is human. Um, <laughs> I'm I, I'm really not. Uh, it, it's anyway. Maybe maybe that'll be a, a topic for uh, for another state of the game. Uh, there you go. Beeb's sleep patterns. Uh, but yeah, it, it um it, it is it's remarkable the 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 changes that they made. So people have said New Frontiers population has dropped as a result of this this event, and I, I don't see that like any other way, right? Like if if they're allowing everybody to to uh, participate in an event like this in Caledonia, it doesn't matter, right? Whether it's a just throwing it out there, whether a shard's doing it or, you know, the official servers are doing it, whatever. Like, any time that any event happens where it's instanced, and this goes to your point about not wanting instanced um, fighting like arenas bumbles, right, what you said earlier, yeah. it's 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 always going to happen. There's always going to be this, like, this vacuum that draws people into it. And that's why the duration, I think, is so important. So maybe the last question I've got before I, I want to move on to other aspects of the conversation, but... Do you think 10 days is too much or too little? Bumbles, you go first. <laughs> um, so actually, I, I don't even know what it is off my head right now. At what point in that 10 days will people be level 50? It, day Do eight. you know? Is it like, it's oh, day so it's two days. So it's two days of level 50 RVR um, at that point. Uh, with how much fun I'm having right now, uh, I'm going to say that it's too short. You know, um, I would enjoy uh, more than two days of 50 RVR in this type of setup. Um, will that happen? Probably not. You know, um, you know, I think they want to get the, the, the reason for this type of event is to just to get people caught up so that they can go into regular RVR. Um, so, you know, they want people back in the main action. Um, kind of going on what you're, what you were saying about you know NF being dead, I don't under me personally, I don't understand the mentality of of just being stubborn for the sake of being stubborn and saying I'm not going to partake in this just because it's not what I want to do. Like if you still want to play the game, you're not having good action, just jump in and try something different. I mean that's kind of what I did. Uh, you know the solo game for the way that I solo, like I roam, I don't go to bow towns, I don't do that. It's a slow process in general. So, um, you know, having quick instant gratification type action and trying a different style of play 
has been really cool. So, uh, you know, again, I just don't understand the, uh, I'm going to be, you know, the stoic, stubborn goon who just doesn't want to play in this just because. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are doing that. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, it's just, again, it's like a petulant child stamping their feet. Yeah, I, I agree for sure. Well, why don't you elaborate on that? And then I want to talk, unless you cover this, I want to talk a little bit about Herorius and also the Zerging in Caledonia. But Zizix, you first. Yeah, sure. Uh, first, I'll comment on what you were saying that, uh, you know, if, if people are sitting there stamping their feet saying, you know, I only want to be in the big boy RVR zone and that's it. And it's like, OK, well, uh, except the fact that there's not going to be a lot of people there and move on. And, you know, in 10 days, everybody's going to come back, like get over it. Like it, it is what it is. That, that, that's all I got to say about that. Um, but in, in regards to the original question, uh, which was, you know, is the event too long or too short? Um you know, I, I'm okay with the length. I think the notice, earlier notice would have been nice. I think we were notified, what, seven days before the actual event? And so it would have been nice to actually know maybe a month in advance instead of just seven days or so. But uh, the, the 10 days seems like a reasonable amount of time. You know, may, maybe a couple more days seems reasonable, depending on how it goes, depending on how much people hate speed warps. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> right, and, and whether MLs make a return, right? Yeah. yeah, that's. I think that's going to be a big thing. You know, like I sit here and say, like, I would love to have, you know, more than two days of 50 RVR. But if we get RVR as we know it on, you know, regular live server with all the MLs and stuff like that, um, you know, at that point, it's like, all right, I guess we're just ready to go back to how things normally are, you know, and you can actually get templated. Um, but, you know, one of you said it earlier, I like the, the slowed down uh, feeling. Uh, I don't like letting people die because my cast speed is horrible, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's just, it, that's just how it is. And you, you know, you kind of have to play around it, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's my thought on that. Yeah. Um, getting, getting to land the Mez or even like the ability to land a Mez in this has been, it is very much, a you know, uh, getting the right target, understanding your, your range and just like being very quick. Uh, yeah. but that has been a lot more fun to me, like, l like really learning the tune. And I think I said this going into the event that I thought that this was going to be more about learning the tune and learning how to play with your group than it was anything else. And it's, for me at least, that's proven true. Like, I've learned more about Thurgist um, just playing the, the, the third for, you know, what, three or four days. I have a realm rank seven or eight Thurgist, right? And I've learned more in this event at, like, level 25 about Thurgist and it's role in a group than I did out in New Frontiers. Um, yeah, you're, you're also getting worth. a lot more action too. I mean, because it's it's instantaneous. You die, you go back, you buff up, you wait whatever forty seconds, and then boom, you're you're right back into it. Uh, so it's not the fifteen minutes between fights where you're roaming around type thing. So I, I think that's a that's an awesome part. I yeah, I'm with you. Um, a point in chat about the look here, here the people who are not participating right. Um, they, if you don't want to participate, I suppose that's fine, but maybe this was your point, um, because it's certainly mine. Um, don't complain about broadsword innovating, um, while you don't participate in the event, right? Like the, the, I get if you don't want to try something new, I suppose, but like it, it, the folks to me that, that are also complaining about it are really like, that's what drives me nuts. Um, here, Broadsword is taking a, a little bit of a gamble on this event, trying something new, really like digging in and making huge modifications and changes and listening. The thing that drives me, I think, nuts more than, than anything is people complaining about that while also deciding not to participate. Yeah. Um, so uh, to that note about Zergs. So um, Herorius said early on that he wasn't going to participate. Um, and I don't think he has. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think Phil has come join this. And in fact, I think on Saturday he had a BG of like 70 strong and logged early because there wasn't anything to fight. I think Borgio yeah. said there were like two groups of mids on at, at most. Um, yeah. And so like, okay. Those people are missing out on anything at all by not participating. So I think it goes to your point, uh, Bumbles, about you know trying something new and giving it a shot. But then you've got folks that are do, like literally doing the only thing that they know. Maybe, oh God, maybe is that a stretch? 
to say it's the only thing they know how. Like this, the the constant zerging in this event, it has not destroyed the event for me at least. And I'm curious to get your takes on it. Hasn't destroyed the event for me because you've been able to get back in and this random porting has made that like totally livable um, and manageable. I, I also, yeah, I also don't think it's constant zerging. Everybody has this idea that it's constant zerging. We've had some great 8v8 fights and you might have you know, a group adding in on the end of it. Uh, but at that point, you know, you, you, the fight is pretty much decided. Um, so it's not just constant 60 people roaming around. I mean, you can find 8v8 fights. Uh, yesterday, we had a whole bunch of them. Yeah. And I, I thought it was great. But, you know, as to uh, Phil Herorius's, uh, you know, whole spiel, I think his the appeal to his BG, and I've said it a million times, it's more of a social thing than anything else. Like, they're all online friends you know so it's just like a habit that they have they get together between these hours and they you know they joke and they laugh and they have fun and i think the dark age of camelot is just uh you know something on the side for them which is perfectly fine like you know that's what you want to do um you know it's just it's it's just different you know uh and them not wanting to take part in this i can almost guarantee that if horius shut his bg down more than half of those people, if they still wanted to play, are going to jump into this event, you know, on ulterior names or alt names so that nobody knows who they are. I mean, nobody knows who anybody is because everybody's taking other names. Uh, somebody took, you know, Bumble's Fern. It was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that that might have been. I actually don't even know. that. I think that's a mid. I've got to actually play that tune. Um, sorry. Um, uh, Zizix, your thought on this? Um, and and you're and first off, just really quickly, you're absolutely right. It's not constant zerging. What I meant is that there there seems to always be a zerg that's roaming through the event. And like again, you're not going to change people's hearts and minds. I guess the those folks that are maybe there for social hour and want to run together and roam together. But I I don't know. I mean, Broadsword handled it really well from my point of view. They just like the, the way in which they get people back into the RVR zone makes a lot of sense and helps solve that. But I was just kind of hoping and wishing that maybe people would try something new. But anyway, Zizek, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, no, no. So um, I think uh, Fuel has a good point here. I think it's a valid point. He says, I don't think it's the case of stomping my feet because I don't want to play uh, a BG Zerg event. You know, I want to progress my 50s almost feeling penalized for wanting to play my 50s. And, and that's a very valid point. I, you know, I have the same exact feelings. You know, I've been trying to, right to spend 12. the last, you know, six weeks or so really pushing my Spirit Master to round rank 12. And, and, you know, that's something I've been really looking forward to just to kind of, you know, put a stamp in my book and say, hey, look, I got a round rank 12 in Dark Age of Camelot. It's kind of one of those like mile markers, you know, um, and, and I completely can see what you mean by that. Um, and then kind of moving that point to about the horrorious thing where, you know, it, it's kind of a, a social aspect for some people as well, but sometimes it's good to try something different. You know, if horrorious said, okay, we're going to go do the BG event. Why can't you do the same social aspect side of it just in a different location? Like you could theoretically go out to a bar or you could go watch movies with your friends or you could play dark age with your friends, you know? And so in this case, Instead of running a New Frontiers with your friends, you could go and do the BG event with your friends. So I, I think you make a, a very valid point that, you know, I, I don't personally know Horus. I don't know much about him. Um, but, uh, you know, he could have basically just stated, hey, we're enjoying our time together. Let's go enjoy our time together doing something else. And it would have been worth it to, you know, encourage more people to come to the event just to kind of get more numbers, get more uh, get more people to, to try it out. I don't know, that's just my thought on, on that side of things. Um, in regards to the actual Zerging and the 8v8s, uh, last night I had a successful 8v8 immediately followed by two more. Um, and and they were not, like, staged or anything like that. We just happened to run into eight people, you know, three times in a row, and then we got Zerg down by mitts. And, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, I, I don't think that the Zerging has been too much of an issue. Again, I do play a little bit later than the regular Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock, where most uh, people log in. But uh, I think overall, it's you know it's been reasonable. I think if there was another 1,000 people logged into the server, then yeah, it might be a little clustered in that zone. We might need to make the zone a little bigger. But uh, I think overall, it's been pretty good. 
Yeah, and uh, Sleepy's got a good point in chat, and I don't mean to like just pick on his comment, but um, he says, I think the event speaks more to the need for a smaller map, less death downtime, and less reliance on Siege more than anything else. And I think this is also something that, like when I talked about the, the differences in the way Broadsword manages the game, um, they have been reluctant, and this is, you know, this is their M MO, right? This is the way that they've run the game is to not scale down the size of the map. For whatever reason, they've just, they've taken this approach. They said very early on that they did not want to do instances uh, for like 8v8, like an arena, right? And this clearly is not an instance for 8v8s um, because it is very much implemented in the way Broadsword does everything, which is the, the player population polices their own community or polices the community. Um, and anything goes in RVR and whatever happens, happens. They've made some small tweaks to things like uh, the, the way in which quests get completed, right? Where your your group needs a death blow in order to receive the credit. And therefore, if you're running 40 or 50 or 60 people and you run down an 8-man, the likelihood of your group getting enough kill credit in order to, to advance is, is far less than a, a group that's going on 8v8. So... There's like some there's some subtlety in the way that Broadsword has crafted this thing that uh, I think makes a lot of sense because it's very much I I don't I keep harping on this but I it's like very Broadsword esque right it's like it's like we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna put in quests and we're gonna put in rewards that um, that benefit everybody but you know we also like we want to encourage folks to do things in a, maybe a little bit of a different way running in smaller numbers. And so I think the quest speaks to that. Um, I don't know. That's just my take. Um, I want to pivot a little bit, if we can, from Caledonia and talk um, about the next chat topic or the next topic that was uh, submitted, which is what aspects of this 20-year-old game are the most dated compared with more modern comparable games and what can Broadsword and the player community do to address them? Uh, Zizix, do you, do you have a, a, li a list? <laughs> do I have a list? <laughs> what can we do to improve this outdated game? Okay, so let me put it to you this way. Uh, uh, Ramek Oaken over here grew up within walking distance of my house, for those of you that don't know. Yep. Uh, another friend of mine who also grew up down the street, uh, a little more than walking distance, attempted to, to come back and play this event. He, and his... Uh, exact remarks, I, I don't know word for word, but roughly came out to be something along the lines of Dark Age is too clunky, I don't want to play it. Uh, and so that's kind of one of the reasons why he didn't end up staying and, and you know, playing this event with me in the end, because quote-unquote Dark Age is too clunky and I don't want to play it. And so I think, you know, that's one of the things that we might not be able to fix, and I think it's one of the the biggest downfalls of Dark Ages. It's it's an old game at this point. And, you know, the combat system's a little different. Uh, you gotta use a lot of slash commands. You know, there's not a lot of hand-holding. Uh, so it's definitely tough for either new players or even old returning players to come back and play because, you know, they're used to playing even a game that's only three years, or I don't know, how how much is, is WoW in terms of, like, age compared to Dark Age? You know, it's not that much younger, uh, but it has so much more... Uh, fine tuneness to it, uh, whatever the word is that I'm looking for there. Uh, essentially, you know, it's been more polished. And, and as time has progressed on, more and more games have become more polished. And so a lot of people really struggle to come back and play this really old game. So I don't have a list for you as to what they <laughs> could do to, to fix that. But I definitely know that that's a complaint from not just my personal friend, but other people that I've spoken to. Yeah. Um... Bumbles, how long have you been playing since day one, or how long have you been playing the game? Yeah, since day one. Okay, so you have a pretty good sense of this. What are there things to you that seem? Because you also play, and I want to I want to take a second to plug your stream, um, because you have some great gameplay of other games, um, and that is uh, what is it? Is it um? It's Twitch.tv slash Bumblezerg, I think, right? Um, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, so I mean, you've got a sense. <laughs> you you play other games, right? So what? To, no, to, no, no, not at all. What? Uh, what? The only other game I've ever played is Valheim. Really? I don't. Yeah, I don't play video games, so I would have no comparison to anything that you're asking on this one. This is wow. the only game I've ever played. 
Okay, so you and I actually have a lot in common because I am not, I don't consider myself a gamer other than Dark Age of Camelot, really. Nope. So that's fascinating. Okay, yeah, so I only I only play this in my off season, and and that's it. And this is this is all I know about video games. Okay, so with that in mind, tell me what you think over the last nineteen or twenty years, right? What do you think are like the maybe are there some easy things that you think could be fixed to to bring the game up to date? I mean, maybe Sans talking about graphics because graphics are. It's like it's you know it's an engine thing and it's not something that's likely to happen anytime soon. Are there things to you that that stick out? Uh, honestly, honestly, no, because this is all I know. You know, um, it was hard for me to even play such a simple game as Valheim, which is basically like uh, Minecraft with Vikings. You know, <laughs> uh, you just chop wood and just do really ridiculous things. But for some reason, it was just. Uh, I mean, I also played with my little brother who lives across the country, so that was kind of fun as well. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly, I would have no idea. Um, you know, like Zizek said, a lot of people, the graphics are clunky. The interface is just awkward slash commands. Um, you know, the communication can be confusing. So, you know, just simple things like that, I guess. Yeah, I, I would agree that there's, there's, there is a lot of nuance to the game. Um, but to me in some way, and this kind of ties in with uh, another question about marketing, which is, I kind of skipped over because um, I wanted to come back to it, but the I, this game is extraordinarily complex. There's a lot of nuance to it. People who have been playing for six months are learning, like, even me, like, I learn things still almost every day about this game that I didn't know. And I've been playing it for a long time, and I put a lot of hours into it. Um, so, to me, maybe the nuanced, like, the game having, like, so much to it, so much depth to it, is actually a benefit. But I agree that, like, the things like slash commands and stuff are definitely a symbol or a representation of when this game was made, right? It's like, it is very much, like, late 90s. There's a lot of this game that very much screams late 90s to me. Yeah. Um, But... Is it a matter of just educating people? Like, I, I think I've talked about on the State of the Games before that I think Mythic took a bet. And I, I could be totally wrong about this. But Mythic, I don't think... I don't think they were prepared for this game to last 20 years. It seems to me that, like, there was there were opportunities 5, 10 years ago, probably closer to 10 years ago, where there could have been this investment in resources and they, it was never made. But I don't know. I mean, I mean, you you got to remember that Dark Age of Camelot is based on a two D game that was originally called. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something like Darkness Falls. Is, yes. Is that what Dar it was yeah. Darkness called? Falls or Darkness Rising. Yeah. Yeah. Darkness Rising, and and that was a two D game, and they basically just took the database of Darkness Rising and turned it into Dark Age of Camelot and slapped a three D game on top of that database. Yeah. So the uh the the problem is is that you know it's definitely got a lot of difficulties in terms of upgradability for sure because of how old it is and i i don't know that they can make it better is the problem like there's only so much programming you can do to to add to it without having to completely rewrite the entire game at that point you know so it's it's definitely uh it's it's an uphill battle to to make it better that's for sure yeah, and the marketing aspect of it—I I don't know how they could market the game. Uh, I just looked at chat, and uh, Kedrick said the steep learning curve. The learning curve in this game is ridiculous. Um, you, you know, even if you are a gamer coming into it, it's just—it's a—it's different, I guess, from what everybody is used to, and especially now. You know, I, I can't imagine a, a teenager jumping into this and you know being all about it unless. For some reason, they, you know, their parent played it or an uncle played it or something like that. And they kind of, um, they heard stories about it. So it's almost like people are coming to this game now because there's a type of lore behind it. Um, but, you know, from what I've, everything I've read, like MMOs in general are kind of a, a dead platform. They just don't succeed anymore. Uh, just, you know, I think it's also just a reflection of society. But, um, you know, I, I just, I don't see how any type of marketing could get a huge population back yeah i um i i don't know if it's i've always i've always believed that there's this block of there's a player base that exists and i 
I don't know what it what it's going to take to get new people back into the game. That's I think the biggest question, um, and pr probably the thing that I don't understand enough about when it comes to launching new servers and new server types. But there's a there is a player base that exists that either played the game at the very beginning all the way until now, uh, and there are people that are playing on on shards right that could totally be drawn back. And I think I, I hope I think that they will be at least a lot of them. Um, so the question is how many of those folks remain, right? And what is it going to take? Is, is there, I'm, I'm going way off the deep end here, but is there like a long-term strategy for Broadsword to develop, a, a you know, another game along this line? You know, what does that, what does the studio look like in five or 10 years? I don't know. It's a, it's like a way super like off the deep end question, uh, for me, but uh, they got. I mean, it, uh, uh, EA owns EA between EA and Broadsword, right? That the amount of name recognition, the amount of work that's been put in, the storylines that have been put into the game, the classes, all of this stuff that they built up over the course of time gives them a great building block if a DAOC two ever came along. Um, but to your point, Zizix, I think you're right. I don't know exactly what what you do, right? Like how how you get beyond where you're at now. Um, so it's just, it's, I think it's just improving incrementally or fixing little things. Um, okay. I want to go quickly to another, uh, uh, question, which is, um, actually first off, um, a question from the crowd, uh, for you, Bumbles, uh, who's the best druid that you've ever played with? Well, that's easy. It's Toons's. Okay. I mean, just a league of her own. Okay. So there you go. That question was not asked by Toons's, I swear. Um, okay. So, um, <laughs> Uh, topic question from Cap. What constitutes appropriate behavior while eight manning? Who determines this? Why should it be followed? And how do you get people to follow it, i.e. going to Solo Town? Uh, Zizix, can you take this one uh, to start? So uh, Cap is a guildie of mine. He, I actually typed that up and, and sent that in for him. Oh, nice. Um, so I don't know if, if it's best that I answer or not, but I, I'll, I'll put in my two cents here. Um, I think there's this general uh mindset that everybody has and mindset one is red is dead right you you go into the new frontiers if there is an enemy there you kill them no ifs ands or buts mindset number two is that there's a small community left in dark age and we don't know everybody but a lot of us know each other whether whether you're on hibnit alb whatever you know we're all pretty familiar with each other and there's this mindset of, okay, respect a fight when you come upon it, whether it's a 1v1 fight or whether it's an 8v8 fight. And so I think Cap's question is kind of leaning on how do you enforce the respecting side of it when some people will always add on an 8v8 no matter what, or let's say you're doing you're in a 1v1, the, you've been at it for 10 minutes and someone comes along and just rolls your 1v1, right? You just lose out on all that time you spent on that, you know, 1v1. So it really sucks. So as a general rule of thumb, the people that I play with, you know, we, we try to see that and say, okay, you know, we're respecting this person's time. We're not going to add on this 1v1 or we're not going to add on this 8v8, right? But you can't get everybody to do that. And that's the problem. And so I think, you know, what Cap is trying to lean on is... Either A, how do we enforce that more? Or B, how do we encourage that more? Um, and, and I don't know that I have the right answer other than just telling other people that are 8v8ing or 1v1ing, like, try to respect those fights, right? But it's hard because I also run with the Zerg sometimes. And when you're running with the Zerg, my mindset is kill everything no matter what, right? When, when you have 60 other mids, there's no way you can convince uh, 59 of them to not add on that 1v1. Like, it's just, it's not going to happen, right? There, there's no way. So in, in the Zerg fights, you just roll everything no matter what. No questions. No one's going to respect anything. Um, but when you're running and it's small man or 8v8, you try to encourage other people to to respect those. But can you get everyone to do it? That's that's the problem. And I don't know that you can. And so I think that's kind of the, the conundrum that comes up. And that's kind of where Cap's question was kind of leaning towards, right? So I don't know if you guys wanted to add to that. Yeah, um... Bumbles, what about you? Do you have a take on this and also the 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 gap between the it's red, it's dead 
right viewpoint and the respecting because you solo a lot right and so yeah. where do where do you fall in there um well, I think the game in the past two, well, probably more than two years, but over the past two years, you've really seen a difference uh, just based off the lack of population. You know, people are just RP hungry at this point. So prior to, um, you know, there was a little bit of, if you were a known name type thing, and it still happens, um, you know, because I also like there's this game is also very clicky. Um, you know, it's like the, it's like a high school cafeteria. There's certain tables and you, you know, they don't interact with each other, yeah. but they know about each other. Um, so the, I, you know, the, the original question of, you know, eight man behavior, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't eight man on NF. Um, I'd like to start because it's actually been pretty fun. Um, but I, I can tell you one thing that I, I, I witness all the time is just the idea and what people do about um, if two eight mans are going at it and new players are coming back into the game and say there's like a four man or a duo or something and you know they've just returned to the game and they add on the worst thing I think for a new player or anybody really is when those eight mans will just stop what they're doing, stop attacking and just go after those two um, because they don't know like the 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 imaginary rules on what should or should not happen um you learn pretty quick you know because they'll rage and region and they just don't understand it um but you kind of feel bad for them um so that's that's really the extent of the the eight man etiquette that i know um but i also get where they're coming from they want true eight man fights you know and they want to you know it, that's what they get a rush out of uh, so I'm not downplaying or, you know, shitting on what they like. Sure. It's just, you know, some of the things that they do and the repercussions, I just don't think they think about. And, you know, that's a bummer for, I guess I look at a lot of stuff uh, on, from a view of how would a returning player react to this? Um, and that's, that's what a lot of, a lot of the things that I talk about and share is like, you know, how would somebody who has never played this game or hasn't played this game in 10 plus years or since TOA came out and they're trying it again, how would they react to this? And a lot of little things like that is just kind of, you know, it's a kick in the stomach type thing. So, yeah, yeah. the imaginary rules of HB8 is, is definitely a struggle. Um, whether it's you're on the 8v8 side or whether it's you're on the person adding on the fight side and not knowing better side. Because again, like you said, there are imaginary rules that people made up. So, how can you enforce that you can't you know and so some people want it to be enforced harder and some people don't know about it and yeah. so I, I think that's kind of a problem of dark age and and so people that get hurt about other people adding on their 8v8 really hard need to realize that it's rvr you know there's there's going to be 500 versus one or there's going to be 8v8 but it's not always going to be one specific thing. And so you got to just roll with the punches sometimes and accept, okay, someone added on our fight, move on. Let's, let's move on from that. Like it's an imaginary rule that you're trying to implement. Right. So my biggest mistake that I made, I think in looking at this and in the past, like talking about it in state of the games, representing points of view and discord, et cetera, is that I thought that everybody could be pleased. That's my personality. That's like who I am. And what I realized after many weeks of like, you know, enjoying starting to run more eight mans because I was enjoying that kind of action and that level of intensity and also trying to like please and appease the the eight V whatever community and also like coming from this place of like like having most of my playtime, not all of it, but most of it in Zerging. And I made this mistake that I thought that, I you know, there's a gap that could be bridged. And what you're both are telling me I, sh I should have listened to uh, early on, and I should have recognized this a long time ago, is that that's just never going to happen. I'm never going to be able to convince the people that believe that it's red, it's dead, to respect folks, to respect fights, right? But also, why should I convince that person who's paying a subscription fee who wants to play the way they want to play, who's comfortable with it, to all of a sudden lose out on RPs and lose out on a kill because of this imaginary rule that exists. Uh, I'm not making a point here. <laughs> I have no I've, I've, I have no agenda. 
all I'm saying is that like I made a crucial error in thinking that both sides of the population could somehow like there's a gap that could be bridged or that there was some middle ground and there really isn't um and you know i you're it's true that a lot of these rules are imaginary i love like that's a great way of 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 looking at it because if broadsword hasn't and again going back to this you know this broadsword mentality where the player population polices themselves there aren't rules like this that exist that might actually exist in other places. And so they're very much imaginary and made up by, you know, made up by the, the, the population or certain uh, section of the population. Anyway, I, I don't have a point to make. I was just saying, I, like, it's, it's incredible how wrong I was <laughs> looking back at it and how stubborn I was to think that that actually could be a thing. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. Like I will still, like I think, like Zizek said, I will still when I'm when I'm running an eight man, I won't, or even if I'm leading a BG, I won't run them by about town because I'm, I I personally I like I have a lot of respect for solors and don't want to encourage, you know, groups of well, more than one or two running through uh, a solo zone, uh. But that's my take, and people might th feel differently about it. I just have to accept that. Again, not trying to make a point, just saying that for what it's worth. Um, so, um, what are some of the underutilized classes that are not played uh, to their potential in RVR? Is the next question. And boy, there's quite a few. Um, Bumbles, from your point of view, maybe this is not, not just about underutilization, but about like really understanding the class and a lack of maybe not a lack of well, skill but yeah yeah like like casper's uh you know doing his thing and and <laughs> minstrel for albion yeah just because they're so goddamn hard to play and they're hard to play well uh people just don't get like all the nuance that goes into them uh if we stick with albion again i think armsmen are very underplayed um but i think that is just based off of what the al bg is doing they just like to run ticks and wizards um you know so it, it's it, those are two right there um if i i mean honestly i don't know i think i think mid uh their tunes are pretty well represented across the board um yeah i think they're pretty well represented but yeah I don't, I don't really know. This is, a, this is a question that is just, you know, it's kind of lost on me because I play them all. So I don't know. I just like to mess around. Yeah. Um, do you think just to this point, though, about wizards and ticks, do you think that those particular classes, be, just because there's a lot of them on Alb, do you think that they're not utilized properly? Do you see certain patterns of of play that you think could be improved on those folks oh, that run God. them? God, yeah. The fact that they play a ton of fire damage dealing classes, but nobody debuffs on Alb. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, okay. Right. Uh, you know, if just imagine if the Alb BG had two designated debuffers at all time for both fire and matter, oh and God. people actually assisted whatever their damage type was, uh, people would actually die in other BGs, but they just don't. They run away and, um, you know. It's it's like a running joke now. I've been playing mid for like the past year or so, and it's humorous to see. You just expect it. You're like, all right, as soon as you run towards Albs, they just turn around and run. Uh, and it's depressing because they have fantastic characters that, if played well, can do some serious hurt. Um, I also, add, adding to that, the players on Alb, that BG actually has a lot of experience. Like, they've been playing the game for an awfully long time, and a lot yep. of those tunes are very high realm rank. And so I don't want to like, you know, rain on somebody's parade here to to put it lightly because I'd really like to curse right now, but I'm gonna try not to. <laughs> you um, can curse. It's okay. I don't want to shit on anyone. Well, Apple Podcasts might, hopefully not. Um, um, <laughs> we'll mark it as explicit and just be done. But um, I don't want to. I really don't want to shit on anyone for saying this, but um, it, it is. There's so much potential. And it's not, yep. I don't, I'm not, I'm really not, like, Sovereign will come in here, like, watch Sovereign, like, fly into chat in three, two, one, right? Like, saying, like, Alps, whatever. Like, I, I really, like, it genuinely, like, it's my home realm. 
Rescue's done a lot for the game, a lot of good for the game. He's built the social component on Alb that, that doesn't exist otherwise. Um, I, I love that. But it's a very, like, a very, like, very basic things, like you're mentioning, the, like, debuffs, right? Would, would make an assisting, just basic assisting, would make a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, even if people didn't change the way that they played. Group I think those two, yeah. you know, the wizard and ticks get played the most because they're pretty simple and straightforward classes as well. You know, there's not a lot to them. There's not a lot of nuance involved. Um, you press a button and either things die or they don't. And that's pretty much it. And that, but that's true of Alb in general. Like Alb is a very raw, people make fun of me for saying this all the time, but it's a very raw realm, right? It is, um, it's about like Alb's, an Alb 8 man, a, a well, uh, like a good group comp on Alb is nuts, is just absolutely yep. bonkers. But the classes are super simple. You just have to have the right group makeup and everybody has to just have a basic understanding of what their role is in the group. Yeah. Um, and not having that is like is it's crazy to me. Anyway, Zizix, please tell me, what are the most underutilized classes that you've seen in the game um, that are not played to their potential? Uh, personally, I could give two shits about a Mauler, uh, Red, um, <laughs> but um, everyone tells me that Maulers are underutilized. I, I don't care. I don't care about Maulers. Uh, get over yourselves. Yeah, they're good. Whatever. Um, but no, no. To be more serious, um, I think uh, a lot of mids. Do not play suppression spirit masters. I mean, I'm sorry, suppression rune masters. And what most people don't realize is that in mid, your near sight and your bolt range AOE root is your suppression rune master. And people need to realize that in whether it's 8v8 or in a Zerg or even in a small man, bolt range root is your second defense to AOE mez. And when you mez and then they demez, now they're immune. So it's like, what do you do? The correct answer is you then follow up with a root. And that's why Alb does really well, because you get a Sork that gets AoE root and AoE mez. And so it's all built into one tune, right? So a lot of people need to both learn how to play a sub RM and then play them, uh, because they're definitely, you know, one of the underrated classes in mid, I would say. Uh, that, that's my two cents on it. Um, Sovereign flew in with a comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, as expected. And Sovereign, here's what I'll say. So, okay, I just, I think it's, transparency is important. People can, um, if you're watching the replay on Twitch, you can see chat. If you're watching, if you're listening to this on a podcast or watching it on YouTube, you'll miss this. But Sovereign says, um, I always love how they never bring up the large population imbalance that while, um, okay, whatever, I, I, I'm just going to flip through this. Alb's never push into Massive Zerg, I'll never push into Target, whatever. Um, if you fix... Alb speed by not needing horses to get around you. It's half the battle here. Um, but they have th more speed warps. They have more. <laughs> well, they have more speed warps, but you could very easily run a Sork in a group and get that warp at the same. I, I just, I, mm, I, it, it, they're very basic things. And I'm not saying that every realm, well, Midgard and Hib are perfect and Alb is not by any stretch. There's um, there's so much more to it than that, but I I would just I think there's some very basic things that could be fixed. I've talked about this on previous state of the games. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse, uh, but there's so much potential on Al, and it's not actually a matter necessarily of changing leadership on Alb. Although I think if there was somebody that you know that called things and forced the BG to think a little bit more technically about fights it would be beneficial but it, it, at a very basic level it's like good group compositions having speed having heals um and having an assist train or just a couple of, of people ma's would be really really good um but i did not say out players are bad in fact i said the opposite of that i just it's i mean if you if you are if you are not forced into um into running a proper group comp, you're not going to run a good group comp, especially when it's a numbers game. But a numbers game, look at the mid BG, look at what Legan has managed to do with the mid BG, right? He understood coming from Hib to mid, what the vulnerabilities of Hib were. Hib had a huge BG at the time. Alves weren't really a concern. Rescue, to his credit, has started to push a lot more. There's been a lot more action from Alves. Greatly appreciate that. It, it, it has made a difference. But 
it is like Legan's BG has great comp like the the groups are well composed. And look at the the train wreck that has ensued on on Hib as a result of mids winning fights because of just at a very basic level, good group comp. It, yeah. it it's not a difficult problem to solve. I think if if uh, you know rescue kind of just at the start of every BG, just picked one person, like one person who is good at knowing the targets, knowing what needs to die first, and you know, and just have this conversation with his BG every night. Like, all right, guys, if you're melee, assist this person. If you're a caster, assist this person. And like designating these things. I think they would be easier, but again, it just comes down to the players wanting to do it. I think a lot of people just go into like crazy freak out mode and just press a bunch of buttons. Once, you know, stuff starts going down, they don't think about it logically. Um, so that just makes it tough, you know, but I think if, if they wanted to improve things, they could take tiny steps to try to do that. Um, you know, I used to run with the rescue BG at night and just surf on them because it got me a ton of RPs. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I watched it happen and it was just depressing. You know, um, you have a group of people who are friends and they look at it in a social aspect and they have fun playing together. And then you have other eight mans that are sort of like flying in, flying out with the BG, but not really with the BG. Um, so it was just a, it was a tough situation and I felt bad, you know, but after I just needed to change. So that's why I went to mid, but yeah, I mean, I think BG leaders, if they just, you know, Legan is very clear about, you know, what people should be doing. And Ramek, you're pretty much the same way when you would lead your BGs in stream. You know, you would talk about after fights, like, these things can improve. Uh, that really never happened on the Alb. It was people would die, people would log, they go sit in bold. And, you know, that's sad because it's an awesome realm and they have some great characters and a lot of fun stuff to do, so... Yeah, and when they get the leadership... Yeah, and, and I'm just Go saying, that, like, there's nothing against Rescue. I think he's a great guy. You know, I've had conversations with him. He's a funny dude. Like, he does so much for the realm. Um, so, you know, this isn't anything personal against him. It's just, you know, I, I wish that the LBG as a whole would just get better. That's that's all this is. This is coming from, like, a good place. It's just I wish they would get better. That's all. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, and, and it is never... The criticism level against Rescue has never been personal. Um, yeah. from me or from anybody else that's been on the state of the game, I, I would not invite somebody here onto the stream or or I, I certainly wouldn't ag agree with anybody coming on here saying that Rescue is a bad person by any stretch. He's a, phen I mean, he is, I'm not going to repeat myself. I, he's he's done a lot of a lot of good for Alb, no doubt about it. Um, but yes, to your point, there could be some things that could be improved for sure. Um, let's go back to topics real quick uh, that were uh, sent in. Um, what do you think will become of the game if Classic Server doesn't release by summer? We're going to go back to Classic. I'm sorry. I said I wouldn't do it. We're going to just, we'll spend just a minute on this. Don't time me. Um, <laughs> what, what, what do you think will become of the game if Classic Server doesn't release by summer and the people that are waiting for it um, and currently subbed? Hmm. Okay. I've got opinions on this, but this is more about hearing from you guys. Uh, Bumbles, what do you do you is classic appeal to you and if it does is there like a timeline in your mind for making the move uh the leveling like the actual pve i have, I have no desire to take part in it whatsoever um the timeline it won't affect me because i don't play during the summer so whatever you know i'd, I'd fall into it once winter rolled around again um so yeah it's um just the wrong person to to ask on this one but uh i like the idea of uh rvr without mls that's just me personally experiencing it now uh has been a lot of fun so i just like it um but yeah you know i went over to the other server both other servers again just to try something new and the grind is just horrible and there are people out there who really enjoy it I'm not one of them. Again, everything I say is 100% opinion. You know, some people might not like my verbiage or the way that I speak and address people, but that's just, you know, that's just how I come across. So, you know, you take it or leave it. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't want a PVE. 
I'd rather just RVR. So if they made it something similar to what we have now, where you can level up purely through RVR, great. Um, if I had to PVE all over again for like a month to get a level 50, who's, I don't know. Yeah. So it's for you, it's about the grind more than anything else. It seems. Yeah. 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 And you know, people bring up Mordred all the time. I have no idea why I never played Mordred. Uh, it just wasn't even on my radar. I don't even know if I knew it exists, but I would love, I would love some type of Mordred where it's just everybody against everybody and you can group with whoever you want and you can not group with whoever you want. I think that would be rad. I think it would be a lot of fun. And again, it's just another, like if they did that as an event, people would go bananas. I think they would have so much fun. I, uh, I agree with you. I, however, there, are, I, I do know that there are limitations. They can't do zone. They can't, they can't turn zones into, um, it, it's a, it's a server, like it's a, it's a world change, right? It would have to be the entire server. Um, like when they make, when they do, uh, some of the events on pen, it's not like they can make TOA, uh, Mordred, you know, or, or, you know, just straight out PVP. Um, yeah. Uh, but Mordred was great. I played Mordred for a while. I couldn't stomach it. I think it takes a certain kind of person to play. Um, I, I mean, I enjoyed my time over there, but it wasn't for me long term. Um, uh, but I maybe now that I'm a little bit older and maybe just slightly like one or two brain cells wiser than I was when I was 14 or 15 when I played Mordred, um, I might enjoy it more. Um, OK, to you, Zizix, what do you think? I hate to, you know, we're repeating things over again, but what do you think if Broadsword doesn't meet? this timeline that they haven't announced by summer they haven't said by summer but anyway yeah i i don't think the summer timeline is a is a is a thing in any way shape or form i mean sure would it be nice to have it sooner rather than later yes but i mean realistically uh you know the classic server coming out whenever it comes out you know i i also don't look forward to the pve grind aspect of it um but i've definitely kind of enjoyed playing you know, this event right now where it's very much more classic-esque, where you have slightly slower cast speeds, you need to have a little more skill and uh, be a little more fine-tuned in your uh, in your decision-making uh, versus in 50 RBR when you got 400 decks, you can just spam single-target heal or you can spam, you know, your DDs or whatever it is that you want to, you know, just spam as fast as you possibly can. Uh, with the slowing heals, you, slower heals, you got to be a little more precise and whatnot, so... Having that slow down could be nice, but on the flip side, having it be slower is also, you know, kind of a, a little bit more tedious in that, you know, you, you gotta, it takes forever to get anywhere. Um, in that, you know, we run slower, we, we attack slower and, and do all that stuff. So I think Classic has its pluses and minuses. I think the biggest appeal to a lot of people is that there's no uh, MLs. And to me, you know, I play Wayne all the time I, i'm completely accustomed to the mls i'm okay with it at this point you know speed warps are fine because we can break them really quickly you know i'm okay with phase shift and and zephyr and all of that stuff because i've got grown accustomed to it at this point um so i i'm completely okay with not having classic and playing you Wayne, but i know that it would be uh very appealing to a lot of people if instead we did have a classic server and and could it bring a lot of people back the answer is probably yes but you know i i don't know about any timelines or dates that because if you think about it realistically the people that are going to come back are going to come back when it comes out they're not like oh i need to play it now or otherwise I'm never <laughs> playing it again. right okay. right uh, well that's uh, the the only people that really are arguing that point are the you know the armchair critics of broadsword i think right mm -hmm. um and there has been like there's been a global pandemic right um there's been a lot yeah. of the things that have happened and it's also a, um, like, it's not a Blizzard-style development team. It's not in terms of size, right? Um, but they've been working on it. Um, here's my take. I am not worried about population splitting. Um, I'm not worried about it because I think that Broadsword will... Tr will f there, there, my, there, I'm sure there's going to be some circumstance that provides a funnel for players to come. Like, I don't know if, if it means that, you know, there's a way to, sh to shut some of the other shards down um, or if they just make it so appealing that people come. Um, I don't, I really don't see there being a massive issue with population. I know that's a fear of a lot of folks. I don't share that fear. So that's just me. I am not worried about splitting. The population is going to only grow, right? It's not, 
it, it, it's not going, I mean, it, you, there's, it's not that you've only got UAN to work with. There are a lot of people that came from other places or just came back from the beginning, right? There, or, you know, they, they came back from many, many years ago to play this event. So that's my take on that. Um, I am, I'm, I'm, I, I would be very surprised if Classic doesn't launch by the summer. It's an artificial timeline. It's a speculative timeline. It's not, you know, it's, but I, I would be very surprised to see, to see Classic um, launch after the summer. But I don't think it's going to make a damn bit of difference what happens. I think you're, I, and, and, you know, to both your points, I don't, I don't think the timeline doesn't really matter. Uh, but I, 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 I just can't see that. I can't see it going that long. Um, and I'm just not worried about the population. How I, I'm also not worried about the grind. This is something that I, I've heard from, from I think both of you and also from folks in chat and people I've talked to um, about this over the last few months. They're really worried about the XP grind. I'm not worried about that. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, because it wasn't sustainable elsewhere, right? The the shards that tried that failed and have eventually moved on and realized that quality of life, like what Broadsword's been doing from, from at least 2015, 2016 on, the QOL changes are actually what wins the population over. I, I that's just my take, but I don't, I'm not worried about the grind. I think I think that I don't, I don't think it's going to take us three months to get to fifty. I just don't think that's sustainable nowadays. Especially what you said, Zizix, before about instant gratification. I mean, it's just it is a it's just very different now than it was back in 2000. You know, 2000 was the years of EverQuest, right? And all of these other MMOs that that came out that took a ton of time sync, and those are the in the minority now compared to what it was 20 years ago for whatever reason i mean wow is a weird example because wow's been here forever um but even wow like you you can get right into the gameplay so anyway rant off um okay <laughs> um that's all i will say i said don't tie me to a minute and i meant it um uh last topic that was submitted i really think i really believe hib classes this is again somebody submitted this this is not me i really believe hib classes need an update it's been a long time elves could really use an update come in line with mid and alp casters okay um i've got an opinion on this i don't think that you can compare one-to-one -one on any realm at all um i think that's a a, a, a difficult thing to do um Zizix, do you have opinions on mid casters and how they compare to Albs and Hibs? Maybe specifically Elds. <laughs> um, I won't comment specifically on Elds, but I think one of my favorite parts of Dark Age is the fact that it's very, very different between all the different realms and all the different classes and everything like that. And that, you know, you go to play uh, uh, Suppression Spirit Master, who is basically the Midgard PBAOE. And then you can go over to Alb and you could play an Ice Wizzy, but they're a very different class. Even though, yes, they both have a PBAOE effect, they're very different in what they have and, and what they can do. And, and, you know, I kind of like that. That's that's one of my favorite parts of the game. And so I would prefer that they don't make them all on the same, you know, level playing field in a sense, because I like that there's a variety there. Hibcasters in general... I, I don't know. I mean, they got stunned, so I guess I'm a little biased against hip casters because they got stunned. Nuke, nuke. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. That's all I got for it. Okay. Um, what about you, Bumbles? What do you think? Uh, I'm just kind of uh, in shock over the choice of them bringing up Elds as a class that they want to bring up to Albin mid equivalents. I don't know if this is true, but I think a lot uh, comes into it. And I think this event has actually helped with that. There are people out there who only play one realm. So everything on the other two realms is so much better. And, you know, they have all these OP abilities, but they don't actually see what they have and what they can bring to the table. Um, I think if this person went to Al and played a wizard, that they would say, oh, wait, maybe my Eldritch does have more things that they can do and more abilities 
to make them an overall better character. Um, do they have the damage dealing? Maybe not, uh, like as a single DD, but they have so many toys and it's a great class. Uh, so I, I, the question I just don't understand, but that brings me to the off point of, I think this event, because the leveling is so fast, has allowed people who mainly play one realm to go to other realms and try out a class that they've never played before or try out a realm that they've never played before. Um, you see so much in this game that people will, you know, cry that somebody's cheating, somebody's hacking, you know, or, or whatever it is, or radar, when, you know, they don't know that Savage's loyalty cloak gives them stealth lore. You know, they don't know that, uh, you know, certain, I, I think it's L's, they're ROM rank five, they just peace out, you know, they just take off and people think they're speed hacking to get away. Um, you know, people don't know that Necros have basically f uh, five forms that they can be in or four. Um, you know, and that, you know, previously to the last patch, they got free mock. Uh, people just didn't know this because they didn't play the realm. They never played the class. So they get confused about those things and they automatically go to, you know, hacking or whatnot. Anyways, going off on a side tangent. Uh, basically, it's I would suggest and advise everybody to go out and try the other realms to so you, so you can actually see. All right. You know, I play against this class. Is it as good as I think it is? And is my class as weak as it is, or is it just what I'm doing personally? Um, and I think that will just open a lot of people's eyes. And I think this event has helped with that, you know, because I know for a fact that there are people who only play, I knew they only played mid who are now playing Alb uh, and have never done it before. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, I see the other side now. So anyways, that's my take on it. Um, with you. I also um, have started an unofficial, this is like the unofficial rules for 8v8. I've started an unofficial drinking game. Um, anytime anybody screams radar or hacks in a group, um, I swear I've got a bottle of whiskey and a shot glass like at the corner of my desk, <laughs> just ready. Um, uh, I'm going to go off on that side tangent that you went off on uh, about necros. I was in a group, I think it's, there's a Twitch clip somewhere where I was in a group and somebody shouted the Necro was hacking because they mocked twice. Yeah. And it was like, I'm like, I'm sure it's an ability. Like, I'm sure we just don't understand what's happening. Like, because I didn't realize that one of the forms at that point was also like a free mock. Um, but I'm like, there's no way like that. You can't double mock. Like, that's just not like you can't reset RAs. That's something controlled server side, not clock. Like, I'm trying to reason. They're like, no, it, they're hackers. They're to I've started. I've started a drinking game. So that's just, that's it. I, again, I'm not making a point here. I just wanted to make that announcement that anytime, please don't get me really drunk. Any, any time somebody else <laughs> radar, radar or hacks in the group. Um, I, to your point, I think like Bumbles is really spot on here. This is um, a, a great opportunity. People have uh, for a very long time only played one realm. There is a, uh, especially the remaining folks in the game, there are there's a lot of realm loyalty that exists just in the same way that there's a lot of game loyalty right and these social groups that have been built and people are familiar with one realm and not another and therefore don't clearly understand how other classes work this is not um i'm not trying to put down somebody who submitted a question about elds like i think it's a valid question but i i, I think it the answer is not something that any of us could talk about. It's more about going and playing wizards and SMs and Roonies and understanding how they, how like the other, the other realms compare. Um, I will say, and this was not said to me in confidence, so I will repeat it, but this is just kind of an example of the way somebody that like a uh, one realm player looks at things. Um, Hero told me when the obelisks were put in that um, he would rather see all of the Hibs lose stun then deal with the obelisk in keeps like very clearly like mm. i would much rather like not have stun nuke nuke in the realm and i would just like not like the obelisk please thanks have a nice day and i think that just i have nothing against phil i like phil um but phil plays hib and hib only and has a very one-sided view and like that i think is a good example um of you know, there, there are a lot of examples of this, but that's a good example of, of not understanding the utility um, on your own realm. So, yeah, 
Uh, but but it's true. Well, he, yeah, he's also just talking about something that it doesn't affect him in any way, you know. But in, in inadvertently, it does affect him because without the stunned new casters who can control, uh, you know, can control casters from the outside, he wouldn't be able to get in there and just go to town, really. Um, so, you know, it, inadvertently, the stunned new does help him. Um, but he doesn't play it, so of course he's going to say get rid of it because the obelisk does affect what I like to do. So. Yeah, and maybe that's less about realm um, and more about just a particular play style or a particular class that he's familiar with, I, I suppose, or just having numbers and not not knowing that. I mean, the utility really utility and makeups of BGs, like group compositions and and the, and the way in which groups perform in a BG actually really does matter. Maybe yeah. it's a little less obvious when you've got so many. Um, anyway, I digress on that. Um, okay, uh, this was... I am so, so thankful to have both of you tonight. Um, the perspective is great. Um, I've been dying to get Bumbles on, and and not having the fern was like an okay thing. Um, because his, I, if you can see, I actually put a, a fern behind uh, on his lower third behind the camera. So just in case the fern didn't make an appearance, I was trying to make up for it. Um, it is. It's so uh, cute. But Bumbles, can you... Tell us about your uh, your Twitch stream and and everything that you're working on. Go, take a little self plug uh, lap if you want to. Uh, there is no self plug for what I do. My Twitch stream is uh, fairly non-existent. I just did it just because, um, you know, it's it's not something that I keep up on. So there you go. That's that's it. Um, I got nothing to plug. I'm I'm uh, you know pretty uneventful in the gaming world uneventful okay all right well but but people enjoy watching your streams and uh i i have to say your opinions and the way in which you communicate is like i i, lo I love how blunt you are about stuff um uh, and I yeah you, love... you might be one of the only ones well no but that's i think one, that's one thing i am I'm, I'm very opinionated and like you know i'm just one of those people and i've always i think it's the the massachusetts in me i'm just i just say what's on my mind <laughs> Yeah. As as a recovering mass hole, I'm with you there. Um I think but that I think that's like a that's a benefit. Um anyway, that's just me. Um okay, but I, I would encourage everybody to go watch uh, twitch.tv um <laughs> slash uh Bumblezerg anytime they get an opportunity, anytime he goes live. Give him a follow. Uh you'll get notifications when he goes live and some of the other stuff is actually pretty cool. Some of the other games that he's uh, the other game, the one game that he yeah. played is quite good. <laughs> Uh, Z Zizix, what about you? Are you still trying to get people to, to fight you for Ram Rang 12? What's going on there? Um, yeah, I'm playing the event as of right now. Um, I'm I'm definitely uh, enjoying myself. I'll say I, I've learned a lot uh, about him because, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I've always I've always just played Alb and mid my whole life and, and never really focused on him much besides my animus. Um, so I've definitely learned a lot. I'm, I'm glad that this event occurred. You know, I've kind of learned a little bit here and there uh my plug is uh yeah once once the event's over come back uh fight me in, in rvr because i still want to uh you know like i said earlier put a stamp in my book and say that i got my rum rank 12 just uh just 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 to have one you know it's it's kind of one of those nice things um i got uh, a guildy he's got a youtube channel you can check him out uh look up mad grim on on youtube he posts a lot of good videos that you know we've enjoyed ourselves over the last couple months leveling up together so uh shout out to him uh besides that uh yeah i don't have anything personal don't don't worry about following me on on twitch or on uh any of those other do you have a twitter we could follow and get updates no, no, don't, no. don't even bother find find me on discord uh hit me up anytime <laughs> on discord and it's easy to find me uh but yeah i'm not a twitter or facebook kind of person so uh, don't, don't look in those directions <laughs> okay that's fair um but it's it's awfully nice of you to uh to be plugging uh, uh, Madgrim's uh, YouTube. That's pretty cool. Yes, de definitely go check out Madgrim's videos. You'll hear me yelling and screaming and, and uh, in, in those videos, so you can in, in enjoy that, I guess. Uh, sometimes maybe a little too much yelling and screaming, but it's all in good fun, so. It's all in good fun. Um, and for me, it's really just uh, one thing and one thing only, the thing that allows this, the state of the game and the stream and the giveaways to continue. Um, it's become the Patreon page, patreon.com slash ramicmedia. Um, if you're not in a position to support the channel, just tell people to tune in or just tune in yourself. That's enough on its own. Just participating in, in the conversation um, goes a super long way. But patreon.com slash ramicmedia, if you like the content, 
if you like the state of the game, if you like, I mean, none of this is, it all ends up costing something, and this has kind of become a full-time gig for me, uh, for me, um, that's terrible decision um, on my part, but um, I'm doing it, I'm here, patreon.com slash ramicmedia, um, there's a bunch of tiers, and uh, I'll give shout outs to those folks at the end. Also, um, I would highly encourage you to check out our new Realm War map. This is at uh, ramicokencom slash map. I'll put this in the chat. This is uh, a project that Winter and I have been working on uh, that is a live war map um, uh, of the game. Uh, I think it's the first time that there's been a war map in many, many, many years. Um, and that is always live at ramicokencom slash map. And we continue to update it and iterate on it as time goes on. Um, again, I really want to thank uh, both uh, Bumbles and Zizix for joining me tonight. Uh, this was a great conversation. I hope to have you back as a duo on the, on the stream and on a state of the game in the future um, at some point. Maybe uh, post uh, Caledonia to talk a little bit about what's happened um, and to kind of yeah, revisit be, things. Yeah, that'd be cool. Awesome. Anytime. Yeah. Appreciate you having me. It's uh, It's been good. A lot of good conversations, a lot of good topics brought up. Yeah, oh, Something for sure. Something that uh, the game definitely needs, you know? Yeah. For sure. Well, um, thank you guys so, so much. Um, and to our Patreon supporters, this is your time for a shout out. Um, to Siambra, to Sticky Note, and to Pronder for being Beard Crew members. That is the largest commitment you can make, the highest amount of support you can give to the channel. Thank you guys so, so much. Uh, to Borgio, uh, to Beeb, Ollie, and Shadow Dancer for being in the It's Not Over crew. Thank you guys so, so much. That is the tier three on the Patreon page. Bellamar, McPherson, and Quays for saving the game, and Arcanix, God's Demon, Gravity, Nargothron, Neomatrix, Shout Shout Let It All Out, Heed, Veneer, Violin, and Bloodcore for running it out in the winner's crew. Thank you guys so, so much for the support. Could not do it without you. Seriously. Thanks again um, to Bumbles and Zizix for joining me tonight. Until next time, be safe, wear a mask, take care of everybody around you in this crazy like world and this global pandemic that we're dealing with. Be responsible, and we'll see you in 48 hours on the next stream Thursday night, starting at 745. Have a good one, guys. Take care.